Nicholas, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank picture. you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, let's talk about investment first, because you are actually a student, a child of the 80s, right? <laughs> I am. And China was opening up in the 80s. And I'm just wondering, when you look at the current investment environment, you look at people building companies now, are you seeing sustainable growth? Or are you seeing stability? Or are you seeing just crazy fanaticism about growing stuff? What's your opinion of what you're seeing today? Uh, well, I think right now, for, for us, especially us from 80s onwards, mm -hmm. um, it's actually a one of the best times to be an entrepreneur in China. I mm. mean, starting business has never been cheaper. Right. You know, starting from the 80s, you know, 90s, most of the growth was coming from huge businesses, you yeah. know, investing in manufacturing, state owned, in state yeah. owned. Um, and also for manufacturing for needs of other countries. You know, the U.S. wants something, we make it cheaper for them. Mm -hmm. Or we find something really good in uh, overseas and we sell it in, <laughs> in China. That's what we used to do. <laughs> but now you can basically come up with anything and start yeah. it for really cheap. Yeah. I think uh, just last week I was watching a CCTV program about this uh, young college student who started selling fruits from his uh, dorm room. Mm. Made a $12 million business uh, within, I think, two, three years, something like that. Yeah. And um, first year he said, oh, I made so many big mistakes. Um, you know, I had terrible decisions and uh, my company lost money. Yeah. I lost 80,000 RMB. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Which is yeah. I'm sorry, but a profit of 12 million, <laughs> and you only lost 80,000 your first year. I think that's that's pretty good. What do you think is making it easy to start things? I mean, it may be perfectly obvious to some people, but why is it so easy now to start something? Isn't there a lot of risk involved in trying to build something for the first time? Well, in China, uh, being that it's such a closed market, I mean, my my, my focus is in China, mm -hmm. so it being a relatively closed market and a relatively localized market, you'll see mm -hmm. a lot of uh, innovation from Western designs into China. Mm -hmm. And it actually takes quite a lot of uh, changes before it works. Mm. And this is something that the foreign entities coming in are not paying that much attention to. Mm. And you see you know, things like... Um, so what do you mean they're not paying attention to? Like they're not paying attention to the iterations that it has to go through? Or the, or the, the, the localization that needs to be done oh, in okay. order for it to be success. You know, if you look at eBay coming into uh, you know, Asia and then into mm -hmm. China, you know, they're still focusing on making a transaction fee. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, in, in Taobao, what they do is you know, they acquire the users first and then they make money through search engine. You know, wow. I'll, I'll place my item a little bit higher, which is a very, very different revenue model if you look at it. It's mm -hmm. a completely different game. Are you com when you focus on, uh, I think when we talked before, you were talking about how you had started in the tea and wine business. Mm -hmm. Are you currently uh, focused on that area or are you moving more into mobile, software, cloud-driven stuff? Uh, I still am. Um, yeah. That was the business that brought me into China in the first place. But slowly, I'm going a little bit further than that. You see most people are buying fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and groceries from online. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the political situation is allowing for foreign entities to sell inwards mm -hmm. or sell online. And um, that's where it's going to be next, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm slowly moving from a you know, retail shop to online shop, and yeah. I can put that shop anywhere in China. If, if you're not the investor and you're going to talk to investors now, whether they're in the West or they're in China, mm -hmm. what is your selling point? Uh, in terms of the macro view, like what are you saying? You're, you're kind of touching on it a little bit here. You're saying it's an online thing, but what are the other sort of pressure points in China that kind of make businesses like this a lucrative one for people investing in it? Well, the thing about you know the online market in China is it's the biggest online market in the world. Mm -hmm. You're looking at something like three trillion dollars in revenue, mm -hmm. uh, RMB in revenue last year, versus uh, about half of that in the U.S. Mm. You know, penetration of internet is the highest in the world over U.S. as well. Mm. I think the uh, you know, internet penetration is like 80 odd percent. Mm. And even in the rural areas, which is actually the, the areas that are leading e-commerce because you can't go to the city to buy stuff, so yeah. you buy stuff online. Which has started this trend where if you live in the rural areas, you want to be the guy that has the newest things first. Yeah. So these guys are the guys that are actually driving. And is it like, websites or is it mobile where that's going to be a big pickup? Um, mobile is the one that's growing the fastest. I think yeah. it went from 7% to 10% last uh, 2013 to right. 14. But that's almost 50% growth. Yeah. Um, I think they were saying um, that uh, with mobile, you know, most of the purchases has been done in transportation or mm. when you're waiting for things. And that's uh, what everybody is fighting for right now. Yeah. You see Tencent and Alibaba yeah. doing the uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay. So I guess the final question I would have for you then is, if I'm from outside of China, but I think that mobile is the place to play, is there still room for me to actually get into that market? Or do most of the large players already mm -hmm. kind of have their footprint? 
I, I think absolutely. I think the uh, the amount of space that you know uh, for mobile uh, e-commerce is mm -hmm. huge, and the fact that somebody from you know foreign coming in understands what the business model from the outside is about, mm -hmm. you know, the needs that are necessary. Mm -hmm. And also when you come in, you have the localization parts covered as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you so Great. much. Glad to be here. Good. Thank you. Thank you.